Hey guys, Gianna's Vaughn, letting your light shine. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. So I wanted to talk about um, why it is so important for our healing to tell people our story, okay? Not saying that you have to go out on YouTube and you have to go out and, and you know write a book. Start with telling one person what you're dealing with in a narcissistic relationship because you're going to feel that even if you have one person by your side, that person is going to uplift you and that person's gonna give you the faith and the hope that you need to keep going, okay? We've talked about this a lot during my episodes that most of the time, the narcissist wants us to feel alone they want us to be isolated from the rest of the world and they want us to be 100% reliant upon him or her for every need that we have in our lives. And you know, the crazy thing is this, I've always been very independent, always, always, my entire life. And you know, I, I credit my dad for that because he taught me how to be a hard worker and you know, fend for yourself and always just take care of you while you love other people, okay? I got that from him. Um, I, I didn't realize how much of a hold the narcissist had on me when I was starting to lose who I was through my personal life, through my work life, through everything that I was dealing with. And, um, you know, the, the year before I finally had the strength, <clears throat> I don't want to say courage because I think I was, I've always been courageous, but when I had the strength and you need strength and we all know that strength comes in numbers, okay? So I literally slowly started to build my army of people and I was no longer alone. I was no longer fighting this battle just myself. Okay. Even though I'm very faith filled and I know that God has my back no matter what I do in life, I started to have one friend over here that would link onto this arm and then I had another one over here and then it just, it just kept getting stronger and stronger and the more people that I told my story to, whether it was just sitting by, you know, a, a pool, having, you know, coffee or a margarita or what have you, um, you can't hide forever. And our expressions, our facial expressions will speak volumes to people. And we, the survivors of narcissism have always been able to put on a happy face. Okay. Um, there was a memory that came up today and I can't erase the memories. I can't. All right. But what I do now is I delete them as they come up in my Facebook because I don't, I don't want to go back and look at this stuff for the, for the next whatever years, however many years. And so I delete them as they come. And I came up with a memory today and I was like, seriously, you pretended you were happy but that smile I had was not real. It wasn't real at all. So um, seeing my growth is, is really crucial too. And something else that I did is I would take photos of myself at certain times, maybe, you know, on a Monday, like how was I feeling? And then again on a Thursday and I would do side by sides and I would, I would just start really looking and going, oh my gosh, girl, you are so much more stressed on Thursday than you were on Monday. Look how much Look how much is it, you know stress you're carrying in your face and all of this stuff. So video journaling is is crucial too. Lock your phone though, so nobody can get into it because you know the narcissists they are snoopers and they will look and they will go through everything. Um, but I'm getting off track again. Let me get back on track. So tell somebody if if, if somebody asks how you're doing, okay? Don't do what I did. Don't go. I'm great. Everything's fabulous behind the tears and behind the smile. Okay. What I began to do, which was exactly what I needed to do to help me get to the point where I could actually just make that choice to get the hell out is when somebody asked me how I was, I would just say, I'm not doing okay. I'm not doing okay. And of course the people that care about you, they're going to say, hold on, hold the phone. What's going on? Let's talk about it. And of course, the moment somebody shows you empathy and that they truly care about you and you know that the people closest to you um, or friends that come into your life, 
they they love you for who you are so open up to him or her and just let the tears roll one of the things that has been extremely healing for me is crying i'm a crier you guys know that i've, I've told you all about it crying is in extremely healing and the way that i look at it is every tear that rolled out of my eyes i don't cry anymore hardly at all which is great most of the tears that rolled out of my eyes, I kept looking at it like, okay, that's one less burden I have to carry within myself, within my soul. And so it was like leaving my body, just kind of like when you go on a workout and you have a really good, you know, sweaty workout and you're like, oh my gosh, wow, I just, I just purged a bunch of negativity because I just worked out. Same with crying. Whether you sit there by yourself, whether you sit there in a group of people, whether you sit there with one person, every time that you shed a tear, you're releasing the pain and so cry and <clears throat> whoever came up with this adage that men should not cry you know what stop T to me it's very it's very um attractive to me when a man cries because a man has a heart just as much as a woman does so why is it okay for women to cry but not men that's crap whoever made that up was ridiculous um when you do cry it just shows that you do have a heart and you have the ability to feel, um, which, oh my gosh, here we go again. Remember I told you guys, every time I tell a story, something comes up. <clears throat> so I think it was the last time that I kicked the narc out before the finality. Okay. <clears throat> and he was gone for, I was on a roll that time. I think he was gone for like two and a half weeks. <laughs> and here's the crappy part. I was really starting to feel good about myself. And then it was just, one night I was either watching a movie or online or something and something reminded me of him. And I was just like, I reached out to him and I, Oh, I just, why did I do that? And I reached out to him and I said, all I said was this, I said, what happened to us? Okay. Instead of just keeping that door shut and just, you know, moving through the hard times and the tears of getting over narc abuse, I opened that door for him to come right back into my life. Totally did, right? This is how well he played me, okay? So two and a half weeks go by, I reach out and I say, what happened to us? And I, I just always like to figure stuff out, right? So I just wanted to know. And I, I guess maybe deep down, I was hoping that he would say something like, well, you know, I was a real asshole and I treated you like shit and shame on me. And you know what? You don't deserve this. And I need to fix my life. I need to fix my, my relationship with my family and my children. and the people that I have screwed over in my life and blah, 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 right? Again, wishful thinking. You're not gonna get that from a narcissist who's going to give you what you desire, okay? So, you know, we had talked for a couple days and then he came back and of course he's like, all right, I got something to tell you. And I was like, all right, let's hear it. Cause I, we had agreed that we were gonna be open books, right? Like I haven't been the whole time the relationship was going on. So he comes in, sits on the recliner, and he lays back, puts his arms behind his head, and he starts crying, just starts wailing. And I'm like, wow, this is the longest separation we've had. And look at him, he's actually feeling the hurt because he knows deep down that what he has done to me has been horrific. He actually finally gets it. Oh, I was so excited, I was so excited. And uh, so he starts going on about how his grandmother, you know, told him, don't screw it up with me um, before she passed. And I was, I was very lucky to meet her. Very, very wonderful woman. Very wonderful. And uh, <laughs> he comes to me and he goes, you know, she told me that I better not screw it up. And so those words ring true to me. And so I've been thinking about it and I just don't want to screw it up. I don't want to lose you. I'm this. So he then started to use his grandmother who passed away years prior to get to my heart. And he went on you guys for, I don't even know, like three hours. Cause again, it's about him. Right. And, but I listened because I, I was sitting there going, maybe this is the real person. Maybe this is the real heart finally coming out. Maybe his heart has finally softened. It was all a game, you guys. It was all a game. So he tells me all these sob stories about how, you know, he had 
he had dreams. Um, my allergies suck this year, just so y'all know. Um, I don't know what's going on here in Arizona, but everybody is like dealing with watery eyes and stuff. So um, he used every ploy under the book. Um, he used every scam in the book to manipulate his way right back in. So I will never forget that night. And I, 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 I genuinely thought that he was being honest. He was not. And this is what I keep telling you guys. When you bring them back again and again and again and again, they get smarter. So when they're away, so I gave this man two and a half weeks or whatever it was. So during the two and a half weeks, he wasn't focusing on how was he going to change his life and make better choices. What he was thinking was, she's gonna reach out to me. She's gonna reach out to me. And why would he think that? Because I had done it many times prior. He knew, he knew. And uh, so, uh, sorry, my other phone was lighting up. And he just took those two and a half weeks and he said, you know what? I'm just gonna make this even better of a manipulation gaslighting tactic to make her really believe that I've changed, which he never did. So um, every time they come back and they say something and they're going to change and they're going to do this, they're not, they're not. They just, their stories become bigger and better. Um, just, my gosh, you guys, I pay attention to their actions their words are meaningless. Their words are so meaningless. There is nothing to back up their words, nothing. Because what they say and do is completely different, okay? So I wanted to um, talk about just be who you are, share your story with people, get your little army and your, your remember that game we were kids, Red Rover? We had a line of people and we were all locked hands, okay? Do that with your people. Find your people, your soul tribe your vibe tribe, okay? Because that is important, all right? Um, they will give you strength because we don't feel very strong trying to escape, but when we have people in our corner, um, that helps, all right? And uh, you guys are gonna have just as many blessed friends and family as I do. Just reach out, they're there for you. All right, love and light to all of you. Thank you all so much.